everybody. Welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah and it is uh, eight o'clock at night and I haven't even started dinner. It's been a crazy long day and uh, Kevin and I had a late lunch but still it's eight o'clock at night and I don't have uh, dinner on the table yet. So just like average American people, hey, everything's not perfect here on our homestead, uh, but I am making a homemade meal with homegrown and home-raised ingredients rather than running to the grocery store and grabbing something out of the frozen section or rather than running to town and going through a drive through which actually isn't even an option for us anymore here on the homestead. We don't eat out. But I want to teach you an option on a busy night that there is still something homemade, nutritious, and quick that you can serve to your family in a pinch. In addition to teaching you something quick to make your family that's healthy and nutritious, homegrown and home raised, I also want to confess to you something. I don't can pasta sauce. I don't can it anymore. And if I have a choice to tell you, don't can pasta sauce anymore because there is an easy, easy alternative that will save you a lot of time with canning if you just can tomato sauce. I've got a lot on my plate in the summer. I've got lots of tomatoes coming in and pasta sauce just has been off of the table the last two years um, and it's just been tomato sauce. So I have developed a couple pasta sauce recipes that you can make at home on the fly that are so good and today I'm going to teach you the fastest because I need to get going. So I'm not just going to make a plain old pasta sauce tonight. I'm actually gonna make a mild Italian sausage meat sauce. It's gonna be so good. Tonight I'm gonna have you come along with all the stages at once that I'm gonna do to prepare this meal so you can kind of see how I coordinate everything. The first thing that we're gonna do is get the pasta water started because honestly with this meal that we're creating tonight, by the time the pasta water boils and the pasta cooks, all of the sauce and the meat and everything is gonna be all done and it's gonna to come together all at once. So I on the back here I have a pot with water. We're gonna get that boiling, but I am gonna put some salt in there. I always put pink Himalayan salt in my pasta water because I think it tastes awesome. So I don't, I don't really measure. I'm just gonna put what looks to me to be about a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt in the water. And in my um, experience, salted water and pasta just makes the pasta taste better. Tonight we're gonna have pork sausage with our home-raised ground pork. And I'm actually gonna do a quick mix and turn this into an Italian, uh, mild Italian pork sausage. Now, you could just use pre-made pork sausage or beef sausage, turkey sausage, whatever you want, but I find this to be super easy and quick. And I'm just gonna put one tablespoon of the sausage mix that I use when I'm in a soup in a hurry. Um, there is a homemade mix that maybe one day I'll bring you guys along and teach you my homemade sausage mix. Uh, but for now, what we are really enjoying um, is this Legs Old Plantation Seasonings Mild Italian Sausage Seasoning. We did put this in our Amazon shop if you want to take a look at it. We are actually able to get that locally in one of our grocery stores. Okay, so one tablespoon of that to one pound of ground meat, and I'm just going to work this in with my hands. You can use a spoon, uh, but that's just what I'm going to do. And this will flavor this nicely, even if it doesn't have a whole lot of time to sit. But if you have extra time, and you can mix these seasonings in and put it in the fridge and let it just kind of sit all day long, the, the flavors will be even more amazing. Another thing that I've learned with this recipe is that I'm not going to need a whole lot of salt in the pasta because the seasoning mix here has quite a bit of salt in it. Okay, so this is good enough. We're going to get this over into the pot and start frying it up. Now when I'm making anything that is tomato sauce based, which is this, obviously, I'm not going to use a cast iron pan because tomato sauce is so acidic that it can actually start ruining your pans if you don't have a really, really thick seasoning on it. And I really don't want to risk ruining my pan, so I'm going to use a stainless steel pot over here. And we're going to do this all in one pot, this pasta sauce. So let's get this uh, browning. The ground pork that I'm using tonight is actually very lean. It's our home-raised uh, raised out in the woods, ground pork. 
And so I'm gonna need to use a little bit of olive oil to fry it in in the pan. The venison we use also is often very lean and so I'll add some oil, but if you're using something that's a little bit more on the fatty side, you may not need any. And honestly, a little extra olive oil in pasta sauce really adds a nice depth and flavor to the sauce. So don't worry about adding a little bit of olive oil. So I have this in here and then I'm just gonna put our uh, sausage, raw sausage in here. And I'm just going to brown it like you would any other meat. Okay, that is done. Now if you have super fatty meat, you'll want to drain the fat off of this meat but ours is super lean, so I don't have to worry about that. So now let's get into the sauce. The first thing that we're gonna put in our tomato sauce or our pasta sauce today is an entire quart of diced tomatoes, but I am gonna drain them. And I warn you, if you don't drain them, you're gonna have really soupy and watery pasta sauce. So I'm just gonna dump the entire thing through a strainer in the sink. These tomatoes are going to cook down in our sauce, so we don't have to worry about them being super chunky, but our family likes a little bit of substance in their pasta sauce, not just all tomato sauce. I'm going to put that right in with our meat. If you don't can your own diced tomatoes, then you can get two of the smaller jars of diced tomatoes at the grocery store or one of the larger jars. That would be equivalent to this. We're also going to add two pints of tomato sauce. Now I can mine in pints because it's just more versatile for me. I don't always use two. Sometimes I use one if I'm making a smaller uh, batch or whatever. Uh, but tonight we're gonna make a big batch because tomorrow we're gonna have pizza. And any of the leftover sauce, the, the pasta sauce with the meat, it makes great pizza sauce. Okay, so we're gonna dump both of these into our pot. Okay, in they go. Two pints of home-raised, home-canned, gorgeous tomato sauce. Put them back in there. Now the color will vary because these were made at home. We're just going to um, mix that all up. I'm gonna get this heating right away so that the flavors in the sausage start mingling with the tomato sauce and the tomatoes start cooking down a little bit. Now there are some extra seasonings that we're gonna add into there, but our pasta water is boiling, so let's put the pasta in. Now we aren't super fancy when it comes to pasta and I don't have time to make homemade pasta every single time I make spaghetti or something like that. Uh, so there is a nice organic brand that is very affordable at Walmart. Okay, back to the sauce. There are three seasonings we're going to add to this pasta sauce today and it's going to make it taste amazing. We're going to add onion powder, garlic powder, and dried oregano. So we're going to add one teaspoon of garlic powder. We're going the quick route here. You could do regular uh, minced garlic, you could do, you know, the real deal, but we're in a hurry. And, you know, I know a lot of you are in a hurry too sometimes, and so this is like the best go-to quick pasta sauce, homemade recipe. Okay, so, and now we're doing um, one teaspoon of onion powder, and we're gonna do one and a half teaspoons of oregano leaves, dried oregano. I am already out of my wild oregano. Next year, I need to harvest like 100 times more. And the last ingredient which we're going to um, add is one tablespoon of sugar. Now this is optional, but just tomato sauce and tomatoes for us is gonna be too sour. And to tame that down a little bit, we're gonna add sugar. If you don't wanna add sugar, you don't have to, but we're going to because our family loves it. And honestly, one tablespoon of sugar in this amount is not a big deal for us. Our family has made the switch to non-GMO cane sugar, and CNH brand is non-GMO certified. Cane sugar is actually not a GMO product. However, sugar that isn't labeled cane sugar is made from sugar beets and sugar beets are a GMO product. 
And even though our family isn't 100% organic, we try our hardest. Now the sauce is completely done. That's it. We just need to let it come to a low boil and then turn it down and let it simmer until our pasta is done. Actually, that's a good reminder. I need to stir the pasta. One thing that was really hard for me to get right when I was starting to can tomato sauce was the consistency to get it thick enough. And I've learned over time a couple tricks how to make that happen and you can check out my tomato sauce recipe and video that I did over this summer. But a little trick that I want to tell you about that you should not tell anybody you ever do, but it works, okay? I've had to do this, but don't just, at least don't tell your mother-in-law that you do this, okay? If your pasta sauce is too runny, or if it's too watery, you can always add a little bit of cornstarch mixed with some cold water and put it in there, bring it to a boil, let it thicken up, you can't taste it, you can't really tell, and then your mother-in-law will still think you're amazing because you make amazing pasta sauce. My mother-in-law always thinks I'm amazing. So while the pasta is finishing, now's the time to just clean up the little bit of mess that I made and start setting the table for dinner. The pasta is done, everything is done. And so quickly before I um, drain the pasta, I'm gonna take out just a half a mug of the pasta water before I drain it because when I'm done, I'll put it back in there and it helps the pasta from sticking to each other. We'll just dump this into the sink. Put that in there. And that way you don't have to add any oil or anything to it. Okay, it's time to take this to the table. Here we go. And earlier, Kevin made some homemade breadsticks, which is actually the same recipe for his uh, pizza crust. So check out that video um, if you're interested and it's time for us to dig in. So look at that, a fast, healthy, and really tasty meal for your family. A lot of this was homegrown and home raised here on our homestead. Hey, if you're not a subscriber yet, right now is a perfect time to hit the subscribe button below. Don't forget to check us out on all of our social media, including Instagram. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.